Hey everyone, I'm Joe. Today it's time for me to do my monthly reading wrap up for January 2022. Somehow, already one month of 2022 has gone by. I don't know how it feels like mere yeah, moments since it started, but it has. January was a good reading month, however, not in quantity because I only read four books by four different authors, three genres, but in quality. And frankly, I always prefer quality over quantity, although if I can have both, a large amount of quantity and quality, so much the better. I didn't manage it this month, but I still read four very good books indeed. And the first of those four, uh, four books is, without any further delay, is Wintersmith, written by Terry Pratchett. This is a fantasy novel. It is the 35th Discord novel, of which there are 41 official entries in overall. This is the third in the Tiffany Aching character sub-series, of which there are five in total as well. By the way, uh, the last um, Discord novel, the 41st, is indeed the fifth Tiffany Aching novel, so it ends based around this character. And as you may know, if you've watched previous videos, or may not, I started at the start of 2021 reading through all of the Discord novels in their official numbered sequence, and I'm now at the very very end of that of which i'm both happy with and also sad with because that means no more um discord or two budget books after this one well after this set which is sad but you know it is the way it is and i'm very happy that i read this one because tiffany aching is a young character in the novel she's about 12 13 years old in the first novel anyway i think she might be like a year older not much more than that in this third novel about her and basically she lives in an area that is not excessively far relatively speaking from the ram tops and you know the area where the witches from the earlier novels were from and indeed they do make an appearance kind of where and got a nanny Og, briefly and and play an important role tiffany aching is this young character she knows her own mind she's highly intelligent she has learnt things through just um randomly picking it up over the years so her knowledge is quite unusual for instance when she wanted to learn, learn more language she she read the dictionary literally straight the way through like it was indeed a normal novel and nobody because nobody told her that that's not how you normally read dictionaries as such you know you can talk to dictionary you don't actually read it as such yeah but she didn't know that so she just read it like a book so as a result her word choice in everyday conversation is a little bit unusual for the record i greatly empathize with that because people often think i'm a bit strange with my word usage as well and she's a very heavily developed character the plot line of this particular book is that the person or entity known as the winter smith which is basically kind of like the essence of the winter and you know, that goes into then sort of essence of being with a different entity uh, takes up a very um fascinated interest with tiffany aching due to the fact that one day they are in the hills there is a dance going on and tiffany accidentally does something that she shouldn't do and basically sort of spoil the dance which alerts the wintersmith to her presence and then he becomes basically obsessed by her and the book basically follows on from there and in a really interesting and curious way the um, environment in this is the chalk uh, generally referred to as it's a very sort of um, rolling hills type environment lots of clay and loam and the soil's not great it's considered a very soft soil granny weatherwax considers it you know how can somebody strong and you know with a strong mind developing somewhere where, where the ground is so soft but there's more than just one way to consider people which obviously she herself has to develop and learn same as everybody else and the characters are brilliant you've got obviously to be aching you've got the return of for instance going to weather and nanny Og briefly and then you've got obviously all the other new characters that um support tiffany aching in this environment and this world and it's just a really interesting book and one that i greatly enjoy and 
overall I would heavily recommend this for Discord fans. Obviously if you're new to Discord do not read this book because the 35th book overall, the third of five in the kip, in the character uh, sub-series, this will just be frankly weird. So start earlier. I'll do another video about where I would personally recommend people to start later on. The second book that I read in January was The Sweetness at the Bottom of the Pie written by Alan Bradley. This is the first book in the Flavia de Luz mystery series of which I believe there are currently 10 of as of the last year I think the 10th was released then and this is one that let's just say I've already ordered and indeed brought I actually have them over there the second third and fourth books in this series because that's how much I actually liked it and for the record I have to thank and blame uh, sarcastically Rachel known as Callan Island Booktube because she talked about this book and series enthusiastically and it got me interested in, and I finally tried it and it's really good. Basically Flavia de Luz is a very young girl, strangely enough the uh, first two books I read in the year were about very young uh, girls, uh, main characters and this is one, she is living in England 1950s uh, at a place called Bookshaw. This is this crumbling, you know, bad conditioned old family sort of mansion or big country house that their family have owned for um, multiple generations. Her father um, is able to barely keep this house maintained. Her mother sadly died some years previously. So now it's her, her two older sisters whom she considers to be somewhat idiots frankly although she does actually like genuinely ultimately at the end of the day and her father and essentially it's a mystery series because she's got a fascination with um, chemistry and basically she ends up getting involved in sort of solving crimes by doing experiments in her laboratory this, this is a big country outfit as an old laboratory and she's trying to solve crimes and try not to obviously get directly involved in them because you know she really shouldn't be I mean her father is quite supportive of her but this is still 1950s, girls have got a particular place, it's still very very sexist, things are slightly changing but not too much, at least not quickly, um, and overall the characters are brilliant, the world is fantastic, I mean this is 1950s England which is not one I'm person used to, but one that is really fun, and all the um, sort of plot line and the way that Flavia interacts with characters and She's a very clever character, but she's aware that people don't want her to be too clever all the time because they're a very clever uh, young girl would generally get thought of as a know-it-all and yeah, gets that reputation. So she's trying to avoid that, but it's hard not to when she genuinely is more intelligent than most of the people around her. So it's an interesting book, one that I greatly like. The mystery was brilliant. Basically, it's a dead body found in the garden right outside the um, window of one of the at the back of the house and this dead body is of somebody that may or may not know her father from the past so this is a sort of a maybe an old family connection obviously this is a person to her and her family and her father so things start spiraling up within a very strange way and it turns out I mean Unsurprisingly, I mean, this is a series now, so you know that ultimately the main characters they have to pull through and do well because of what it is. I mean, that's not a surprise to anybody, but you know, they can certainly have some pretty uh, dark emotional moments, which they certainly do. And I really did enjoy this overall, and I would highly recommend it. The third book that I read is an ebook, and that is. 16 Ways to Defend a Walled City, written by K.J. Parker. K.J. Parker uses the alternative pseudonym of Tom Holt, or maybe Tom Holt uses the pseudonym of K.J. Parker, I'm not sure which way around it is. Tom Holt, uh, the name, is known for humour, which I have on the shelf literally there, as you can actually see them, which I greatly enjoyed. They are very strange and sort of mad. Yuma, which I 
have indeed enjoyed in his situation. That doesn't always work for me, but it does with him. This, under the KJ Parker name, is rather different. Basically, 16 Ways to Trendable C is the first in the trilogy, first of all, although it's a very loose trilogy. It is based around a location, not the characters. I believe the second book, which I will read in February, is based around seven or eight years later. The third book, again, seven or eight years after that. So it's not about the characters, it's about the location, which is this, unsurprisingly, this um, coastal city, which is heavily walled, considered a very strong city, part of this big empire. However, one day, without warning, this army starts approaching and lays basically siege to the city. And the only person who happens to be available because of circumstances, which becomes quite co uh, complex and quite interesting, is a person who is to the kingdom, you know, a foreigner. He's you know, a different skin colour, but he's been he's considered fairly well off by this point because he happens to be a uh, engineer and indeed the chief or captain, I can't remember the exact title, of the sort of engineer corps part of the army. So as a result, he ends up taking basically the control of the defence of the city against this invading army. Obviously he is an engineer, he designs bridges and aqueducts and you know pontoons, that sort of thing, to span gaps and you know access across the kingdom. So all of a sudden he's using this same knowledge to think how do you defend a wall city? You know, hence the title, you know, 16 ways. Um, for the record, I don't actually know whether there are 16 ways mentioned in this book, but there are certainly quite a few. And he does many things to try to defend the city. It's complex, interesting. The overall idea of the plot is actually fairly straightforward. It's just literally, you know, that ultimately he has to defend it. Or all costs until relief gets there. But it's well written, thoughtful, and it does certainly have its humour and very good character development. And I. I'm very happy that I read this because KJ Parker's becoming one and all for that I've started reading more recently and I'm really happy that I have because it's worked out frankly extremely well overall. The fourth and final book that I read in January was The Island of Dr. Moreau written by HG Wells. This is one of the Yellow Spine SF Masterworks published by Guns, of which for the record I have more than 120 at this point. I have rather a lot and that keeps growing. H.G. Wells is a very well-known uh, author within science fiction and indeed a very well-known author outside of science fiction, uh, just an author in general, and an internationally well-known author. Of course, his books have been adapted into movies and plays and other things over the years. This is a very well-known one. And indeed, this I sort of partially already knew the story of from other places. And in particular, if you are curious, I knew the story sort of also from The Simpsons. Simpsons did a Treehouse of Horror episode where this was one of the very short, uh, like what, five or six minute um, little ones in one of those Treehouse of Horrors based on, on this book. So, you know, imagine Homer and Marge and that, you know, how she was. So, you know, it, it, personally, I quite liked that particular one. And the book is really, really interesting and the atmosphere is fantastic. So, for a premise, this is basically the sort of log or the diary entries of one man. He's aboard a ship which um, gets struck and starts sinking. He gets in the lifeboat. As he's drifting, running out of water, he thinks he's going to die. As he's barely conscious anymore and thinks he literally is almost seconds away from death as far as he's concerned, he gets rescued by a passing ship and obviously he does not die. Obviously, because you know, that's all the. I mean, you know, he can't ultimately because the book must be. Oh, at least you know, he can't die quickly. I should suffice to say, because he has to survive till close to the end for his records, for him to write his records, which you are then reading, and then somebody else to find them, and therefore you are reading them. And after he gets rescued on this boat, he finds out it's a bit of a strange boat because it's got a a fairly random selection of animals on it like rabbits it's also got a lynx on it but you know this is you know set um nearly 100 years ago so this is you know sort of during you know the british empire that sort of thing where shipping rare creatures around 
often at the expense of probably killing them when they get there due to poor conditions and people being basically arrogant and thinking that they somehow need exotic creatures in their gardens and such, basically idiots, you know, uh, ends up killing a lot of the animals, sadly. I mean, you know, that was, that was the times. And he just thinks, obviously this ship is going to sell them to some rich, probably Englishman or somebody else. And, you know, that's, that's it. But he gets dropped off at this strange island who the uh, captain of the boat is sort of informally working for. The person who owns the island is, unsurprisingly, Dr. Moreau, who had a reputation years previously in London and his reputation wasn't entirely good. He was a very good uh, doctor and scientist but he wasn't one that exactly considered ethics, let's say, when he did experiments. I mean, the picture on the front of the book shows part of what looks like a tiger or some kind of big cat but superimposed or merged with a human face. Let's just say, you can probably guess what this um, Dr. Moreau was known for and what he, what people had issues with him for. I mean, he wasn't exactly an ethical person, you know, when it comes to morality and, you know, the morality of what, you know, what you should do and shouldn't do with, say, for instance, experiments, hence his face, was dubious at best. And basically, it's this main character's time on the island, he's experiences with Dr. Moreau and other figures and the other inhabitants of the island, which are very strange, let's say, put it lightly, is an interesting one. The plot is relatively simple, but the ethics of what um, the main character is experiencing with Dr. Moreau, of, you know, him doing horrible things to people and animals, and the main character kind of having to almost accept it, but then he's, sort of, he's aware that he shouldn't accept it, and he's very conflicted because yeah, he has to accept it because he's stuck on the island. I mean, he can't manage by himself, so he has to rely on Dr. Moreau, food, for instance, whilst he waits for a boat to come by in some unknown length of time, probably within a year's time. So he knows he has to sort of survive on the island, but he has to pull up with the ethics and try to come to terms with this um, concept by himself without him really you know, bothering him in, in too much of a way because he won't be able to live on the island happily if he's going to be upset and truly disturbed by what he sees and it is pretty disturbing, frankly. The setting is pretty solid for the most part. It's fairly simple but works very well and the atmosphere, frankly, that's the thing to note about this book. It's the Dr. Moreau character and his sort of ethics and morality combined with the atmosphere that he creates and indeed the main character creates together is an interesting one and I am very happy I read this because I actually like this I mean it's like I said the plot's not complex not by modern standards but it's not about the plot it's about what he asks to do with science and ethics and just you know what people will take if you're pushed and overall I am very happy that I read and with that said, that is it for all of the books that I read in uh, January. So if you've read any of these four books, then please leave a comment and we can have a talk about it. If you have any suggestions based on any of these that you, uh, books you think I might enjoy, then again, please leave a comment. And uh, as I'm always interested to get into new authors and new subgenres, that sort of thing. Uh, I will leave links to all four of these books in the description box below as always as well as to my social media and I will also link Rachel as the guilty party for making me read the Flavio de Luz book sarcastically by the way I actually would greatly appreciate Rachel and overall that is it for this wrap up so thank you for watching and I'll see you another day bye for now